So in this one, we're going to be setting up URL routing. That is, we are going to be using Angular to handle every sort of URL. Now, before we actually jump into that, you need to learn how to use a local web server for Rack. So using Rack instead of anything else. And we actually put this on YouTube so a lot of people can benefit from this because what Rack does is it's going to allow us to have a single page running and we can test it like we're actually on a live web server. So what you want to do is go to this YouTube video. It's youtube.com slash watch slash video P4N3MDOSITS. Um, or it's also on a YouTube channel. If you go to joincfe.com slash YouTube, um, of course, it'll be in our video uploads. But if you scroll down on our main page, we've got this AngularJS one and it's going to be right there. We literally just upload this so you can see how to do it and you can use that as a reference at any time. But the main thing here is to stop using the Python module one that we were using and switch over to using Rack. Um, I'm actually going to still set up Rack here in just a moment, but I'm not going to go through the installation process. So we'll see you in just a moment. So go ahead and pause now, watch that video, and then come back. Okay, welcome back. We are going to be doing ng routing so we're going to be using angular route um, this is the library that we'll be using it's very simple very straightforward um, there's not a whole lot to it actually other than how it handles what we display on any given url but hopefully now you actually have your rack up complete so what we want to do is let's go ahead and open up our config are you file file here and notice that I have it in the triangular folder and config.ru is there. We have source index and all that. I also have templates. This is coming directly from the GitHub as it stands right now. So really I didn't change a whole lot here, but what I want to do is now navigate to my file. And instead of being inside of the SRC folder, like we were doing, we're going to be inside of the triangular folder and we're just going to do rack up. I'm going to press enter and now I should have my stuff loading and running just fine. But see, when I click on blog one, now what it does is it just shows an empty page, right? So we actually want to handle this in some form. So all these clicks or if I go to about, I'm just going to be setting up the basic version of the URLs for now. It's not going to be perfect, but it is going to be something that works. So let's go ahead and grab Angular route. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this from Google CDN. Of course, I could get the local file and do some other things, but I'm just gonna use the Google CDN. And I'm gonna come into my index file here and right underneath our AngularJS, we're gonna do script source equals to that script. And then we're gonna close it off. I'm gonna change the, the quotes in a second. I've got a quote error. I'm gonna keep consistent and have single quotes. All right, so now what we see is this XYZ, just as we've may have seen before, but we're gonna go ahead and just copy 1.5.8 and replace that here. That's essentially how it works. Notice that it is actually the same URL, so I can even keep the HTTPS up here. That's not 100% necessary, but it is the same URL, it's just using Angular route. There's another one I'm actually going to go ahead and throw in here, and that's Angular resource. It's something we're probably not going to cover quite yet, but it's something I like to do every time I'm using Angular route. I always like to include Angular resource because of the different things that we would end up using for it. And all I have to do is change that to resource. The nice thing about using the CDN is it's pretty straightforward as to how we use it. So now there's other things that I want to change and that is the script source. I'm going to go ahead and change these and just get rid of that dot and just make it slash. So now it's an absolute path relative to the URL we're on, um, which of course is gonna be in here. If I refresh in here, no problems, no worries, we're all good. Um, I now have this Angular route page set in. So all I have to do is add this into my module, my actual application. So we have our app module here. I'm gonna actually update the way we lay this out by pressing um, enter right after that single bracket and then closing it off after the square bracket. And I'm gonna put external and then say ng route and then also ng resource. I'll put that right above it, ng resource. 
and then I'm just going to put internal here. Now, this is not a requirement, of course, but it's something that's nice. So I know all the time, no matter what I'm looking at, that this is an external resource. This is something outside of Angular that I did not create, whereas this is something inside that I did create. It's very simple and straightforward for me to do. And then also, if you have other developers working with you, you can just tell them that one simple rule, and it makes all of working with these modules a lot easier. Um, so, if, for example, if they wanted to use blog lists to see what that meant, then I could just easily jump in and make some changes to that. Whereas ng resource, I now know it's an external one and so on. Um, so now that we've got these two external ones, it's the first time we've actually used an external module inside of our Angular project. So that also means that we can now put these Angular modules inside of our configuration. So the way we can use these configurations is what they actually give for us. So let's actually look at the Angular ng route. If we scroll down here, um, what we see is this provider and we've got this route provider. So route provider is actually what we would be using inside of our configuration. For most configuration sort of things, it is something provider, which we'll do two of them here in just a moment. But route provider is the one we're gonna be using. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and I'm gonna put it inside of this function brackets. Now I'm gonna pause here for a second and show you that there is another way that you might see often. You might see square brackets on the outside of this and then a quote, comma, you might see it in this setup. This setup is not any different. I like doing it this way because it's extra concise. Um, there might have been a requirement in older versions of Angular to do it the other way with the square brackets, but I like it just with the function. In fact, I go ahead and separate these things out a little bit because the spacing doesn't actually matter in JavaScript. So I go ahead and just do this. And if I had another one, which I'm gonna put in and I'll say location provider, and I can just do something like that. Really cool, nice and easy, straightforward, not that complicated. So now let's actually make our first URL and we're gonna use this route provider and I'll do dot and then enter when and I'll just say blog slash one. We're gonna add a new thing in here and we'll say template is just, we'll say h1, hi. That's it. All right, so that's the format for it. Um, but we can also do when, let's say slash blog slash two, we can also use the template for our component. So we had blog dash list can close that off just like that. So this is giving us a few different options. And then finally, we could also say otherwise. So just any other URL, we can put our own stuff in here and just say, temp uh, we'll write template and I'll just say not found. All right, so we've got a few different things in here that are showing us how these routes actually work. So if I go back into Angular and I click on blog one, I now see that it's giving me it's giving me blog list, so it's actually not working correctly. So let's see why. We're gonna go ahead and inspect the element here and go to console. Doesn't look like I have any errors. Let's make sure everything is saved up and we'll refresh in blog one again. Looks like we're getting still a little bit of errors that we don't wanna see. So let's go ahead and go back into our HTML and we're gonna actually add in here I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this, the blog list being on the main page. I'm gonna go and just cut it out for now. And we'll say div ng view and close off div, save that. Now if we refresh in here, notice it says not found on blog one. And if we go back to the regular blog, we see not found. So, so the URL is actually not routing on blog one, even though it should route, it's just saying not found, okay? So let's actually add the trailing slash. Maybe that makes a difference. And that's still saying not found. So let's say block two actually goes to the list. So block one, it should actually give us this high, but it's giving us an error instead, or it's just going to not found. And then if we go to the main page, we still get, we should get not found and that's correct. So we need to make a router for that. And we'll say win slash blah, or just the slash. Curly brackets, we'll do template and we'll say blog 
dash list, blog dash list. And there we go, there's our template there. Press a, put a period there, refresh. And now our homepage has this, if I click on this, now it goes to blog dash one. Now it's actually working. Um, so the reason that if I just do blog dash one is you might see this little hash. That hash is something we don't actually want to have. So let's go back into our configuration and update our location provider. So we'll do location provider dot HTML5 mode, parentheses, brackets, enabled, true. And I'm gonna go ahead and just separate this out a little bit. So we want it in the HTML5 mode, I save. Location provider, HTML5 mode. And I got this error, so we see no base. Go ahead and click on this, and it gives me the error. So that's something else that's really nice about uh, Angular is it does um, sort of things that allow us to work with this. It says it requires a base tag. So this base tag is simply in our index. We can add a base tag in here, as it says in the documentation. Notice that we have this head base href. So whatever the base tag is, so this is the base URL location. I refresh in here and now it's actually showing it. If I change it back to the home page and we click on it, now that URL's gone and notice the H tag, everything's now working as expected. And that has everything to do with this location provider stuff. All right, so this is the first of a few things that we're gonna be doing with the URL provider. Um, or the ng route, or basically URL routing in Angular. This is the first of a few. So stay with us. We are going to be coming back to this to make all of these URLs just a little bit more dynamic and work a little bit better for us. See you in the next one.